Hi, my name's Andy and welcome to the UVA chat show and this is episode four and we're going to be looking at the DJI smart controller. Now I know this is for the real DJI drone enthusiasts, it's quite an expensive piece of kit but it's amazing. Um, I've been using this now for probably the last eight months before lockdown um, and I've been really really surprised by it um, and what it can do. The only problem for me is with my eyesight that uh, the screen is a little bit small and I've been trying to figure out a way how I could incorporate um, my iPad to the smart controller. So the first thing I had to look at was the drone Litho um, bracket. This is the brand new one for the smart controller made from aluminium. Great piece of kit. I'm going to show you how this goes together. Um, and I've also got this Lilliput 4K monitor. Um, and I'm going to talk through this later on. But the thing is between the smart controller and the iPad is that the smart controller is Android and my iPad is Apple. So how do I get the image from the smart controller onto the iPad? Well, keep watching and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to show you how you can connect the smart controller to an iPad and taking into consideration that the smart controller is Android and my tablet is Apple. Um, so first thing I need to do is that I need to set my phone up as a hotspot, which I've already done. You can see that there's the uh, blue light there. Um, and if I go into the settings, you can see that my Wi-Fi is connected to my phone. And I've also done that on the iPad as well. So the app that we're going to use is called a, a Power Mirror. Um, basically, you need to open the app on both devices. And just click OK. And then we click Mirror. And it's found my tablet. start sharing. So now you can see that we've got my screen from my smart controller on my iPad. And if I come out, you can see now that it's mimicking, well, basically mirroring as it's, as the app calls, um, the smart controller. So if I go into the DJ app, you can see it opens quite fast. Uh, it's almost actually in sync. Um, I will do a video uh, section to this where I will show you what it's like from the drone's point of view and actually looking up and down. But if I go into, into the camera view, and go into the map, on our little island and you can see it works really fast. So we'll like the refresh on the screen. Let's have a look at Newport. So you have to remember this is working off my 4G 
of my phone. So we come out of there, we go up into the brackens. Uh, where do we want to go? There's uh, Ellen Village. And we can go into detail, but it's showing up on the iPad really clearly. Like I said, really, this is for my use in photography is having that slightly bigger screen so that I can um, compose my image or um, my video. Um, so if I come out of that, that really fast, go into the film, go into my albums. Um, let's play this one. Now I worked out there's probably about a two millisecond delay. It might be slightly more, but to be truthful, it's it's not that great um, hassle um, in catching up. And you can see the quality of the picture is just as good. Well, not as good, but um, the iPad is fine for doing what I need it to do. Like I say, it's a slightly different when you're actually using the drone. So let's stop that. Come out. I did notice um, when I did the last firmware update that actually it's got the DJI Fly app uh, on here and it's also got FPV Live. Um, not something that I use um, at the moment, but that's where it's got. So that's how you connect the Android part of the smart controller to an iPad. You can download the a power mirror directly from um, the Apple Store, and if you go into the Google Store on your computer, um, you can download it and then store it onto a micro SD card. That goes then in here, and then basically you go into your settings, um, uh, and I think apps so that you can then load up so that's how you connect your iPad to your smart controller so the next thing I wanted to show you is this Lithor smart controller bracket um, it's made of um, aluminium, very, very strong. You've got a moving part here, which you can connect um, a monitor or, for instance, the iPad, which I will show you shortly. Um, it's extremely clever um, in the way that they've actually designed this. As you're probably aware, on the bottom of the smart controller you've got some screw holes. Um, I've used this in the past for my camera strap which I use a, a proper camera strap. Um, it, the Lithor does come with um, a lanyard. The only thing I would say about it, it does kind of cut into your neck a little bit, it's not that comfortable. Um, but it's very simple to place in, just slide it underneath there, line up the screw holes and these are actually, you actually get screws with um, the bracket but I'm actually using the um, clips that uh, go with my camera strap. So. Screw that one in a little bit. Okay. 
Don't have to over, over tighten it. But that's basically it. It fits really, really well. Um, great thing is underneath, you've actually got um, screw holes to actually mount it to a tripod, if that's um, how you like to use your smart controller. Um, I must admit, one thing with this smart controller, I do find that the sticks are actually a lot more sturdier and a bit more control. You, can, you find that fine movement that you've got a little bit of resistance, unlike the original controller that comes with the Mavic Pro 2. Um, that's just one of the, the features of the, the smart controller. Um, again, your antennas come up, everything is accessible, the buttons underneath, it doesn't interfere. The only thing I would say is that obviously the holes where the, uh, if you were taking off the uh, sticks or York uh, to put back in here, um, you'd have to take the bracket off. Um, personally, I've got a bracket that actually will go and sit on top of this and um, cover, sorry, that sits on top of this, so I don't need to keep taking it on and off. Um, but it, it's really, really sturdy. Um, once you've got that screwed in, it's just the design. It's so well done. Um, the only thing I would say is that this bit here um, is where you would connect your lanyard. Having it hanging over the screen, um, I th th it sort of gets in the way for me, so that's why I prefer using the, the camera strap uh, connection and that just clips on that, which I'll show you shortly. So the next thing is, um, is to get the bracket to connect the iPad to the smart controller. So this is the bracket, um, comes with a stainless steel ball. That just goes in there. It's got wide feet so that if you've got an iPad or a tablet with um, a cover on it or protector, it should fit in there without having to take it off. You can also move um, these legs at the top here. So to open it, push the lever up. Then you can extend it. And then to connect it, the hole that's at the front here basically I'll just open this up so that I know where, where I am. nice and tight and then you can bring the forwards and there you go I'm just going to take my iPad out of this cover um, the one thing I would say is that I would use um, a, a cover once you've got that down just lock it in the place at the back by pushing it down. And then it sits there really, really good. You've got the, the adjustments, obviously with the ball. So as you can see, it all works really, really well. Um, it's quite comfortable. Um, it's not overly heavy um, with the iPad, but um, like I say, I would suggest it's just that 
even if I tried to clip it in a bit more, it really won't go that much more. So having a cover would definitely make sure that was tight in there. So that's connecting an iPad. Next, we're going to have a look at the Lillipot 4K monitor and connecting that to the smart controller. So this is the Lilliput uh, 4K monitor. Um, it's got two HDMI ports, one in, one out. Um, you've got the power on button um, and you've got a rolling button here, which also adds uh, for going into settings by pushing it. Um, it comes with this uh, adapter to take a F720, which I'm using at the moment for this. Sorry, F970, um, because this has two pins. So just lock that into place. Plug the battery in. And there we go. Monitor's is already on. Now, this is where Lifthor comes in. They supply a HDMI to HDMI lead and um, adapter screw to connect a monitor. And it goes in the same hole as before with the iPad bracket. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then the HDMI on the control controller, plug that in, and then connect to the input there. Monitor up a little bit. And there we go. Very, very quick, very, very simple. Um, I find this actually a lot more sturdier um, than using uh, an iPad. This is the reason why I got it. Um, you can get the lily puts for about 130 pounds and I got um, two batteries and a multi-charger uh, for 40 pounds. Um, like I say, for people that have the smart controller, really this is sort of wanting to get the very best out of your equipment. Um, it's a much bigger screen for me. Um, it's a little bit easier than looking down. There we go. And you can actually adjust the brightness to whatever. Um, it comes in about 900 nits. Um, the smart controller is 1,000 nits. I know the Sky Crystal are 2,000. But I've got this set up um, by the color and what have you that I want. I'm only using it as a second screen for um, going through to um, viewing my um, composition. Um, again, if we go into the videos and play you see a, a, quite a difference now um, because we're using HDMI instead of Wi-Fi. Um, it's really keeping up with the um, image on the smart controller. There's very little lag, if any. Might be one millisecond. I don't, I'm not sure, but. Um, it's very, very light. Again, I use this with um, my neck strap. Um, 
the great thing is with this that it, it sits, if you put it down on the table, it's going nowhere. It's, that's the great thing about um, this bracket. Um, everything works really, really well. Um, you do also get a sunshade with the Lurdy Pots, and you've got this rubber casing, um, which is a protective if you do have to drop it. Um, I did buy a 7 inch screen protector that I put on um, the screen, um, just that I heard that it can get scratched quite easily, so I just wanted to protect that as best as possible. As we do with all our equipment, we try and look after it as best as possible. So I'm not going to bother showing you how to connect up to a tripod. I'm sure you can work that one out for yourself. Um, there's two examples there. Like I say, you can connect up an iPad or a tab any tablet using the um, Mirror app, um, using your Wi-Fi from your phone. Or you can invest in something like this. Um, because I do photography with a normal camera, um, this actually comes with um, HDMI to uh, micro HDMI lead. Um, so it'd be something I would consider using alongside my normal Sony A99, um, just uh, so that I got the bigger picture of what I'm looking at. Um, this is just looking through the viewfinder, especially because I have problems with my spine and what have you. Um, the one thing I will say about the lethal brackets, I actually had to get it from um, Norway where they're, they're made and sold because um, I couldn't get it in this country at the moment. Um, there is the added tax, uh, which is 20%, sadly. Um, so um, hopefully um, some of our drone suppliers uh, we'll, get, we'll be able to get these in as soon as if we're um, off and away from this lockdown. So I've set up the drone, I put it on a chair. Um, obviously we're under lockdown at the moment. Um, first of all I'm showing you the Lilliput 4K uh, monitor and I'm just going to move the drone camera down and if you watch both screens, there is very little lag between the two. And the picture is really good. And at the same time, I've actually set up the iPad. And if I put it in front of it like this, A little bit faster with the controller. But there's only a little bit of lag. But you can see that the app does really, really well. There's a little bit of jittering, but I could say too many seconds. Um, and there is another benefit to this. If you do have your A2 CFC, and you decide you want to do some commercial work or whatever, you can set up the iPad, um, give it to your clients, and um, then allow them to see what you're seeing uh, instead of showing them afterwards. Um, and they can sort of give you directions. If they say, oh, can you look over to the left? Or can you look over to the right a little bit? Then you've got that time saver in, in a way um, you know if you're not happy to, for them to hold up the iPad you can stick it on the bracket um, and put it on a tripod I wouldn't put it get one of those mono tripods to put it on um, with the small legs they are a little bit clumsy and can fall over quite easily I would use a proper tripod if you're going to do that but that's these two devices. 
and the app. Um, try it for yourself. If you've got the smart controller and you have a tablet, download the app, have a go, see what you think. Um, if it works for you, then um, great, um, job done. If um, it doesn't, then, you know, you haven't lost anything by watching this. So thank you for watching. I hope that it's been useful um, to some. Um, if you've got any questions, then obviously you can always get in contact with me. Um, we've got some more interviews to do over this year. So I hope to um, build on that for the um, drone groups and for the channel. Um, till then, thanks for watching. Uh, be safe, fly safe, and look after yourselves. Thank you.